episode of Inside Out. Today we're talking about something that I think concerns us as a nation. We're talking role models. Um, in Nigeria today, it has been argued that we don't have role models anymore. Um, I, I don't know if that is true, but then the question is, if we do have the younger generation, what determines their choice of role models? Is it um, as a result of something physical? Is it status? Is it intellectual? Why and do we need role models? Or do we even need role models? That's the question. I've attended a lot of um, youth forum where um, I've heard a lot of young people say, we can't find who to choose. How do we choose our role models? In fact, that was what gave rise to this conversation. How do you decide that this person is worthy of being called a role model? And I think I have a panel here. I'm going to start my introduction from my left. I'll be introducing Prince Joshua Oyeni. He's an on-air presenter, yes? And global entrepreneur winner 2015 Nigeria and USA. Hmm. You're welcome to Inside Out. <laughs> Her name is Oyin Consola, Oyin Consola Alabi. You're welcome to Inside Out. We have Mr. Chuk Saneke, he's an actor. <laughs> and lastly, we have Mr. Martins Uakwe. You're a writer. You're welcome to Inside Out. <laughs> Who's your role model? Um, I don't think I have one. You don't have a role model? Yeah. Why? Who is a role model? A role model, the definition I have up until this morning is somebody you want to emulate. And that's why I have a problem. Hmm. If you're trying to emulate someone, what is it you're emulating? His success, his, his career, um, the fact that he's successful in his business, is that all you want to take? That is not enough. It goes beyond that. Somebody who you want to call a role model is somebody you know. Somebody who lives on your street, for instance, you know him inside out. Mm. You're not just after what you see on the surface. You're looking deep. Who is he in his bedroom? Who is he in his family life? And all of that. And, and if you ask me, I don't think we have up to 10 of them. Now, the problem we have today is the fact that most of us judge the sex from the outside. We want to be like some of these actors. Beyond that, there's a person beyond what you see. Hmm. Are you ready to go through what that person goes through? Because you can't just speak from the surface. Are you ready to sacrifice? Are you ready to let go of certain things? So for me, I, I, I don't really think I believe uh, what you call role model. I'd rather have a mentor. Okay, let me, because I don't want to start the conversation yet, I just want to get an overview of what your thoughts are. Let me talk to, to you, Chooks, role model. Yeah, um, um, first of all, I want to piggyback to what he said, but okay. then I would like to digress a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, because um, when you talk about role models, you talk about certain persons that you look up to, maybe at a specific industry. Okay, if you are an actor, I'm an actor, for example, there are persons I look up to as role models. In Nigeria, I have the likes of RMD. Abroad, Keba Sutherland, popularly known as Jack Bauer. Yeah, I used you to know, work Jack Bauer. That's 24, anyway. 24, yeah. So mm -hmm. when I look up to those people, I don't look at the bad side of them. I just need to pick out what I need to pick out, what makes them outstanding, you know, what they do. You know, so, so you don't agree with him that you, don't, that you shouldn't look at just one aspect of their life? No, I am saying that I am look, personally I am looking at one aspect of them which has to do with acting, which is the industry I find myself in. So to that extent... <laughs> Yeah. To that extent, they are my role model. I don't have to look at what they do in the bedroom or what they do in whatever, but to the industry that concerns me, I want to look up to them and be like them. Okay, so Different from mentorship. Okay. So for you, it's necessary to have a role model yes. in, the, in a certain aspect. Yes. And you don't care about what they do outside that aspect in which no, you're looking I at don't. them. Yeah. As far as excelling in that aspect, they can be your role model. Yeah. Okay. Prince, let me hear your view on this issue. 
Well, I think uh, to start with, we need to make a distinction between who a role model and uh, a mentor is. For me, a role model is somebody that you don't necessarily need to have a contact with. Okay, you look at them from a distance and you try to model a part of your life after what they do. Mm. Okay, so it's very important that we understand that aspect. You, see, you can't find a perfect human being. No matter how much they try, they cannot be perfect. So the idea is that we try to look at the things that they are doing very well and then take after them. I'm a broadcaster, for example. I have several, I've watched your show several times. To me, from a distance, you are a role model to me. And um, so I, I think we should look beyond trying to know how they eat their food, whether they eat amala with their hands or whether they, they're trying to drink tea from the, from the, on the, on the, on the cup or something. We should look beyond that. Are they successful at like what they do? Are they doing it very well? Are they fine professionals? If they are, they are role models. I believe mm. that. That's your, that's your definition. Okay, so I mean, it's sort of. So, who are your own role models? I have a role model in the U.S. His name is Dr. Willie Jolly, and I patterned my profession after his because he hosts a radio show in the U.S. that has over 23 million listeners across the world. And so, um, I just saw what he was doing, and I felt I wanted to do something like that. I wanted to have a global audience. I wanted to be able to make impact the way he was, you know, he is making. So I, I did that. I did a radio show in Lagos. And then two this years after... This was before you ever went into radio? Before I ever went into radio. I was a nobody at the time. So okay. I just saw what he was doing and I felt I wanted to be like this. Yeah. He, he was, to me, was a model. Yeah. A role model. He was playing the role of a broadcaster. And so I think he was doing modeling the role of a broadcaster. And that's that's the, you know, the word, what, what you know, the conjunction means. So he's modeling a broadcaster. So I just felt I should do something like so that. So he inspired you to even be Really inspired me. me. Really yeah. inspired me. And it took me... Two years after, you know, his inspiration, they get to meet him in person. So, as I said... Oh, you have met him in person. I have met him in person in the U.S. in April. So, I think uh, for that, it really inspired me because when he, when he saw what I was doing and that I was trying to model my own professional life after his, he was so proud of my achievements. And it took a lot of time to introduce me to many of his, you know, uh, colleagues in the U.S. I think the, the most important thing is that he has been able to make a difference in my life, in what I do. And today, I can say that I'm, I'm trying to be better than him and than what he's doing. So, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, let, let me ask you this question, Chicks. And I don't want to talk to you yet, Oying, at all. Just, I just need you to listen for a while so that we can put it all together. Um, your role model, is it somebody you got when you got into the industry? No, actually, um, before I got into the industry, yes. I've been looking up to them. You know, so it, it was a passion that was built over time. So in the process of trying to build that passion of acting and as a model, I looked at certain people that I want to become. You know, so in, in line with what I do, I strive to be like them. So it was before I actually got into the industry, I, I saw them as role models. I look at the industry I want to be into and I look the role, at the, the well, is it is it is it a case of I think I want a career in this thing, and so let me look for the people who have excelled in that industry and fashion in quote, my life, my, my activities, um, is it you read up on them, you follow everything about them? You, how? Well, yeah, how did they yeah, become There's a saying that when you want to strive and, and get to the peak of whatever you want to do, you need to look out for the best. Yeah. So that was exactly the strategy that works for me. Yes. You know, finding myself in that industry, I needed to excel. So I looked at who do I look up, up to? You know, I started stud studying these characters and you know, over time I saw them as my role models. What do you, what, what do you know about RMD, for instance? Yeah, RMD, watch the way he talks. His mannerism, you know, he commands, he commands, um, um, what do you call, obedience, he commands respect. He commands respect, yeah. Yes, so people like that, you know, I, I strive, most of the movies I've done, I try to like, be like him. There's this aura around him. Now, someone like Kiva Sutherland, um, Jack Bauer, I look at, in as much as he played the character of Jack Bauer, of course, the script was written around him, but I want to look at someone that thinks deeply in terms of sci-fi, like, I, like, I love scientific stuff, like gadgets and all that. So from that aspect, I want to look at him like someone that thinks deeply in every situation, try to figure out the solution, yeah. you know. So these are some of the characters that, you know, influenced um, them being my role model. How did you become a writer? Before I answer that question, I love the question I asked him about what he knows about RMD. That's the problem today. We know little or nothing about those we have chosen to be our role models. 
outside what I've just said earlier, the surface thing. Now, before I became a writer, it was just an inspiration. Yes. Okay, um, I've, I have like two books. One, the third one I'll be going to press very soon. This last one. <laughs> this last one, I was in my little room somewhere in the Lorraine Inquirer State while I was seven, and the inspiration came, and I started writing. Okay? Mm. Now, I have around me scholars, teachers, for instance, who at some point in time would help me go through my scripts. I made sure there are, there are certain things I need to put right. I really wasn't, I didn't actually have anybody. The thing came and I started putting paper, uh, pen to paper and then today I'm an author. All right, let me, let me come to you now. I mean, I mean you've heard. Okay, um, a role model, I'll start with the word model and role. Okay. A role model means that someone is modeling a particular role. That's someone you can look up to from afar. And then you say, okay, I like this particular person. I want to be like this particular person. Mm. While a mentor is someone you have a relationship with. A mentor means you are above me. You are successful. You know what you're doing. And I would like to be like you. So I want to get close to you to be able to learn one, two, three, four from you. So a role model, you can watch, you can observe, maybe read their books, listen to their products, watch them on air, anywhere, stream on YouTube, anywhere. But a mentor, you must have a relationship with that particular person. You can't call me your mentor if you don't have a relationship with me. And relationship means one-on-one. -on -one. You can call me and I'm available to speak to you, whether once in a month or once in a week or once in a year. But you must have that relationship with that particular person before you qualify that person as a mentor. So, based on what you have defined now, a role model is someone you see from afar. Yes. And you like their you lives or what you perceive their lives to fine. be. And then you, you take, what, what um, how important is it to have a role model? Is it, is it, this young man here, um, Mr. Martin says, he's written three books, he doesn't have a role model he doesn't believe in. There are three types of people on earth, three. The man around, the man behind, and the man ahead. The, the man, man around? The man behind, and, and the, the man, man ahead. ahead. Okay. The man ahead is your mentor. The man around, your friends, colleagues, that you must think like, or like minds, the same feathers, whatever they call it. And then the man behind, someone you are also trying to mentor or trying to lead in a good way. Yeah. I don't believe in anything called self-made. I believe that everyone has something called leverage at a particular time. If you don't leverage, you will struggle. Mm. If you don't leverage, you will struggle. Okay. For example, you are in school and then you are reading a particular book to, for a particular exam. It would be nice to censor or ask your friends what they think about a particular course. You may know it, but listening to like three, four, five other people may also expand your mind, expand your knowledge, and then you can approach the answers in at least three other ways. I'm sure a lot of students know that you can't do garbage in, garbage out for lecturers nowadays. They want to see how you think also. So I don't believe in self-made. I believe that everyone has to stand on somebody else's shoulder to be able to see better, to be able to see faster, and then to reduce your errors. There's no point in being a malfunctioning adult when you can as well learn from someone who has gone ahead of you in that particular field. The, the, the question, the, the point he raised, yes. um, which to me makes a bit of sense, is why do I want to model my life after someone I don't know, for instance? You know, that the feeling is such that, why would I say somebody is my role model and I want to be like him when I only know an aspect of his life? Um, how valid is that? Does that matter when you say someone is your role model? If, for instance, I say, um, Jack Bauer, using his example, is my role model, he's an actor and I want to be an actor, and so, yeah, this is my role model. He's on top of his game. 
or I say an, a Halle Berry or a Beyonce in music? I would justify my response. He said, why would I want to emulate someone that I don't even know? Yes. Then my next question is, what is stopping you from knowing that particular person? You can't keep saying, I don't even know, I don't even know. If you want to stay at the level of being a role model, just observing the person from afar, it's OK. But I also know that you can study to a point where you would know that person, even if you never met the person. And I'll give you a good example. I used to watch Pastor Bimbo Dukoya on air, and I just liked her. And I'm like, OK, I like her aura. I like her presence. I like the way she spoke. I liked everything about her. And then I didn't just stop by having a crush or whatever you call it, I moved on to say, OK, where exactly is this particular person? It took a while. It took so many things. But at the end of the day, I had a one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship with her. So I went beyond role modeling, just observing from afar, to a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. And I had about three or four years with her before she relocated and passed on. And I can boldly say that anything I do, I have that at the back of my mind that, OK, if you were to be Pastor Beam, how would she do it? You can study, you can learn. There are so many people that you can observe and emulate, even if you never get to meet them. And you, I've met people like Anthony Robbins, I've met Joyce Meyer, I've met Miles Monroe. When you listen to them, you know their heartbeat. I don't want to know how many of their weaknesses. And then he said earlier on that nobody is perfect. So you may be into drugs, you may be a, an adulterer or something, that's OK. According to my definition, role modeling. You are modeling a particular role, not all the roles. So I can let you be in other aspects, but if I want to learn a particular thing, then I focus on that thing, pick it, and I move to the next person. It's very simple. OK, um, I, I was, so what you have said here is that what the point is yes. valid. That yes. you take the aspect that concerns you, yes. depending on which aspect of your life. Yes. If you are realistic enough and if you know that no one is perfect, you know, if you get close, you will see something you don't like. If you get really close, you will see it. But the reality is, if they get close to you also, they will see something they don't like. So would that also mean that they should not mentor you because of something? So I think it's a two-way thing. Just pick what you want, be as useful as possible, and move on. Yeah, OK. So um, Martins, let me talk to you now. Based on the conversation you've just had, heard from um, um, Oye, what, what is it that allows you to believe that if I don't know you, you can't, men you can't be, I can't take you as a role model? Well, basically, like I said, um, Somebody who I want to pick as my role model is somebody I should know. That, that, that would be a mentor. A mentor, yes. Somebody so, yeah. I know one on one. Now, my, my choice, the reason why I, I made it so it's somebody is such that I can have access to you, I can ask questions. Of course, whether I would like it or not, the truth is role models does exist. They are there, OK? But I have a problem. And the problem is this. Why would I want to just pick a part of that person's life? Today I talk, I speak like a priest in my parish. Now for me to want to be like that man, that means I have to go to the seminary, I have to be tutored, and I have to become a priest. That is my idea. But then, coming back to what she had just said, the fact still remains that whether you like it or not, these people have these other sides that can weigh you down when you get to know about them. And God help you, you don't have this very um, light mind. You can be blown away. Because this person, mm. you have placed so much trust, so much hope, so much belief. That is, you have person. created an idol, so an to speak. Almighty, yeah, you have created that thing, and this person just does something terrible. If you're not strong, you have a way of just sweeping you off. A lot of people are shaking and nodding their head and agreeing. Are you guys agreeing? Yes. yes. That that is part of the problem. Okay, let me, let me ask you, Prince. Tell me how having a role model shaped you to become who you are. What are the exact things that you looked at and you said, this is who I want as a role model? What informed your choices? Okay, I come from a background where... Um, I went through a lot. I, 
I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I wasn't born with a spoon at all. You know, my father was a taxi driver. You know, before you know, before he, he died uh, about 15 years ago. And so, when I got into the university, I was trying to define myself. And so, mm. at a point in time, I, I attended were, the program. You, you, you were raised by your mom. I was raised by my mom, yes. Yeah. And so, I was trying to define myself. I had no father figure. And so, eventually, when I discovered that I just loved speaking, you know, I was entering for debates and I was winning right in the University of Lagos, I felt I should do something with it. And so, I started looking up for people that were doing fantastic stuff, people that were, you know, that came from nothing to become something. That's role model, you know. So I was looking for okay, people that, you were looking for. You actually went looking for people who have your grasp, your kind of story. story. You know, the story that mm. you know they are making ways because they have my, they have my, my, my kind of story. So mm. I was trying to make that, uh, you know, that distinction. And so I started getting some people. I had to start watching several of these programs on TV and listening to radio, you know, Dan Foster, Inside Out with Agatha Mata several years ago, and several programs like that. And so I was asking myself, how can I actually make a difference the way they are doing now? How can I create a value for the society? And that informed my decision to want to go, you know, get these people and look at their lives and model my life after them. So what I did was, I was looking at the achievements, okay, how did they start? And so I looked at the lives of Dr. Dr. Willie Jolly. Willie Jolly started with just, you know, speaking in secondary schools in the U.S. and then from there he founded a show, from the show he started writing a book and then from writing a book he became a best-selling author, from being a best-selling author, a Hall of Fame speaker in the U.S. You know, he rose through the ranks to become who he is today. So I felt I should do something like this. And so I began, I began doing those things. And, I saw that between you know, a very short time, I was replicating their kind of successes in my field. And so that, that for me was a very, was a very you know, a defining moment. Mm -hmm. uh, what I did was um, I wanted to start a radio show, and I didn't have money. And I've always been uh, taught to know that you see, not money is everything. First, start by defining your potentials. What do you want to do? And so I felt I wanted to start a radio show. So since there was no money, what would I do? I started learning, uh, learning how to write. And then from writing, I wrote a proposal. You know, to the University of Lagos Radio and said, I wanted to start a radio show, but there's no money. Just give me, a, you know, the end, just give me the time, the air time to do this. And so they did that. They said, are you sure you can do this? They said, I can do it. Just give me the time. I would invite this. Now, Dr. Willie Jolie. You Unilag. Yeah, to Unilag Radio. Dr. Willie Jolie actually interviews fantastic stuff, uh, people who have done, you know, great stuff from around the world, and then uses their story to inspire people. And so I felt, okay, how can I create my own brand? You know, I can I do the same thing, but with a, with a distinction. And so I said, okay, let me start with interviewing Unilag alumni members who have done very well in their fields. Mm. And so I did the proposal, sent it in, and the university said, oh, this was a fantastic idea. Let's give you, you know, a shot. And they did that. And guess what? After, after a few months, you know, I started interviewing some people that I would never have been able to meet in, on a one-on-one. -on -one. Professor Pado told me, you know, and uh, it, it culminated in my, in my being able to interview the current governor of Lagos, Mr. Kiyomiyambo, they just, you know, in April. So I felt that for me, you know, helped me, being able to know what they are doing, how did they start, you know, with nothing, just had that optimism, that faith, that hope that it could happen, you know, that constant belief that it could happen, and then they kept doing it. And over time, you know, there will be results, there will be successes. So I think for me, instead of looking at their lives and then starting from somewhere, you know, not until you have everything you need, start from somewhere and start working hard at it. And with consistency, eventually you will start making a difference. And so for me, that was all, you know, made a mental difference. <laughs>
He's always said Nigaro is his model. So um, I, I'll start from Nigaro. I'll start from Slow Dog. Please sit. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll start from Slow Dog to Nigaro. Please Slow Dog, please. <laughs> All right. He's, 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 he's an okay. indigenous rapper in the East. Oh, he's a rapper in, in the, the East. East. Yeah. Okay. To Nigaro, from Nigaro uh, down to Fino. And if you come to the West, yeah, I also love Olamide and um, the late Da Green. You understand? So, uh, they, they, they are, they are, why, why, they are, the actual reason why I, I love them is because they are creative. You know, most people don't even know how to speak their languages. Not to talk of using it to, you know, to rap, carve something out. So it's, it's so what inspired you about what they do is the fact that they use their own language. Yeah, yeah. To rap. Yeah. They are indigenous rappers. Yeah, local rappers. And then you now picked the latest one, which is Fino. Yeah. Fino, are we? Yes. And does, is that his role model from what he rapped now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let, sorry, let me talk to Gallant. I will come back to you. What, what, you have a role model too? Yes, ma'am. Fact, music, acting? Music. Music. Okay, come and do this. Let's, let's, let's try and see if you understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I say? This is for the girl then. All the fine girls in the house, can I hear the voice? <laughs> okay then. <laughs> she is a fire dancer. Me like the way she wind her booty and her booty give me vibe. She's a barley dancer. And the way she roll it, it makes bad man to want it. She's a fire dancer. Me like the way she wind her booty and her booty give me vibe. She's a barely dancer. We never know. Eh? We never know. Who? Patoranki. Okay. But you said Weezy. It's not Weezy. Who is your role model? It's Patoranki. <laughs> Okay, I just, you know why I did both of these is to find out how much influence role modeling has on the young person and wh whether you can identify or hear someone who they are modeling after. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to all, the, all of them and um, my, my question is, does it not make, does it not, um, for want of a better word, does it not hinder you from discovering yourself? Or does it help you discover yourself? Because, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you and I'll, I'll still talk to Chooks about the same thing. Because I listened to him and I listened to him. You know, everybody clapped and all of that. But immediately everybody knew who they were modeling after. Is it possible that they are hiding themselves to display somebody else? Okay, um, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> yes. And I will see it from two angles. First of all, from the two of them. Yes. I've never heard um, either of the artists before. I usually hear Fino, I hear... Pato Rankin. Pato Rankin. You know, but when he started, I knew that it was Fino. But another thing that I saw was... He's looking up to Fino, but I saw him. Now. You, did you see him or you saw Fino? No, 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 I saw him. Okay. I saw him. <laughs> I see that he looks like Pato Rankin. And hey, then... is this how Pato Rankin looks? Yes. <laughs> Look. Eh? <laughs> I see that he looks like Pato Rankin, and then Pato Rankin is mentoring him, but I saw him. Because it was a little difficult for me to pin who he was singing like. But it was when they said Pato Rankin, I was like, oh, okay, so I see some flavors. A good mentor will... But they don't, they don't know these people. This is, these are people that are Observers. Yes. Yes. What's your question? My, my question is, it's not like they are mentoring them. They are role models Role models, them. fantastic. Okay. But, I mean, the fact that, let me put it like this, the fact that as soon as they came to sing, everybody People knew pain. who they were modeling after. Yes. Uh, to me, now, it's, the question is now like, where are they in it? Okay, realistically, and yes. to be very honest, I saw them. Because apart from Fino, I saw Olamide in him. 
Okay. You know, I you saw Olamide in him too. Yeah. Apart from Fino, I saw Olamide in him. <laughs> now, it was also difficult for me to pinpoint that Pato Rankin was his mentor in the first 20 seconds. I had to ask Prince that who does this sing like? And he said, oh, I don't know until they say so. And then when they said Pato Rankin, I'm like, okay, I see some flavors. If you are going to really emulate someone, what you're supposed to do is, first of all, know that you can't copy. Because if you do, the best you would be is a photocopy. Mm. So be original. <laughs> be original, first of all, because everybody else has been taken. So just be yourself. Mm. You know, so just stay where you are and look up to someone. Or take it a step further, get a mentor, a one-on-one -on -one relationship. He had a role model, first of all. And when he got to the States, he called his role model and said, here I am. And then role model became a mentor. Now, I don't know who his mentor is. That's the name. I don't know him one-on-one. -on -one, but I have seen him. And the picture I see of him can let me have an idea of who his mentor is. So they can see some flavors of someone in you and upon you, but never lose your identity and originality, because that's the only reason why I would celebrate you. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right, Chief, let me, let me ask you your story. Okay. What informed your decision to become an actor and a model? These two things, RMD is. OK. Before I get to that question, do you mind if I um, buttress on these two? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, now, I need, I need you, both of you to have um, a sharp distinction between copying someone and having that person as a role model. For me, I think what you just did was to copy Pato Rankin. You as well tilting towards Fino's um, cat, um, pattern of rapping. Did you just copy Pato Rankin, Gallant? Okay, go on. No, I, no, so have a conversation with him. Yes. Because I... I you, I don't know. you performed, I don't yeah? Know Pato. You performed. People saw Pato Rankin in you. Now, let me give you this instance. Two Face Udibia, you know who is meant, is a role model, is the likes of Fela. Pato Rankin, his role model is um, Lucky Dube, Bob Marley. But you can't, you can't sing and you see Bob, Bob Marley or Lucky Dube in him. He created his own pattern. Do you understand? Before now, we barely have um, some artists that are like Pato Rankin that have that kind, that kind of reggae. Um, um, flavor in his music. So he created something. He had his role models, but he created something that is unique for himself. Bonaboy did the same thing. And that is what this creates, makes you a different person in the society. So having role models doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you have to do exactly what they are doing. It's just, it's, it's like a guide, but then to create something for yourself. I can't be talking at like um, um, RMD at my age. But I should be able to like strive towards, you know, getting that flavor that makes him who he is, that will actually make me excel even more than him. Okay? So you just create the Do you agree with what he said? Yeah, sure. You, what about you? I don't. You don't? Okay, the reason why I don't accept what he said is, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. We all know that Liu Kesh and Olamide does the same thing. Who is Liu Kesh? Shocky. Huh? Okay, I don't know, but I know this song. All right, you know, uh, one thing I came to understand in Nigeria Little is... Kesh and Olami, they do the same thing. Yeah. And they it, do the same thing, kind of music. Yeah. Olami, they actually signed him. You understand? So what we're saying is, um, in the industry today, it's only when you come out that you have your style. That's just the truth about it. It is only when you come out you have your style. Yeah. That you cannot be an original... And you, come out. No, listen, you have, to, you have to climb on one soldier to come out. You understand? You have to climb on one soldier, uh, soldier to come out. So what I'm saying is, um, what I'm saying is, uh, Fino, if I'm actually doing, uh, doing what Fino does, uh, it, will, it would actually tell. Because the kind of rap and the kind of things you say, though if you actually listen to what he says, if you're an Igbo person, you listen to what he says, and if you listen to what I said, then you can actually differentiate us. Likewise, Olamide, likewise, that is what makes it different. It's not as if it's what, it's not as if it's what we say. Have you realized that, I mean, I'm, I'm just using the music industry now as, in fact, maybe even in, not in the acting industry as well, or creatives, that they do so much of the same thing that you don't know which musician is which. That is, actually, it happens now. Lately, yeah, you have some music. Or you watch like a movie and all the storylines are the same. 
and all the actresses and actors yes. are the same. Yes. But they just have different titles. Exactly. But then you look at those ones that are really, really like they stand out. Looking at what makes them stand out, there are movies that okay, there are a lot of movies that have similar storylines, but there are ones that are outstanding that get to that they get to win awards and all that. That is where our emphasis on not a lot of things that have been done. And you see, he made a valid point when he said, um, if, you, if you have not come out, you can't have your own star. Now, whether that is true, I don't know. But that would inform the reason why everybody wants to, once you are successful, everybody wants to photocopy you. I, I yeah. am more particular about sustainability than coming out and fizzling out. Yeah, but he's understand? saying that you have to come out first before you talk about being sustainable. Yes. That's, that's what he's saying. Of course, someone has to push you to come out. Someone has to invest money in you to come out. But sustaining that coming out is the most important thing for me. You know how you would want to fall? You understand? Because you know what it took you to come out. So you have to work on yourself. And definitely, anything you do, as far as you're out, pleases the people. You understand? Anything you do, definitely pleases the I'd be like, Fino is a rapper. We all know Fino as a hip-hop rapper. You understand? And this thing I did here now, I might decide to put it in a Fuji, and I'd create a difference. You understand? So it doesn't really mean that the person actually is working the same way the rapper, the other person is working. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sociology, um, I would like to make a comment. According to sociology, because I'm a student of sociology, I've been made to know that there is no relationship between the name of something and what that thing does. In the sense that if this is to be a jacket, I can also call this and I'm holding a jacket, and that will still change the function that this thing performs. So that means that if you are picking a role model, that doesn't mean you should change the person's name to your name, because it's not going to make you to be who that person is. That doesn't mean you should work the way the person works, because it's not going to make you be who that person is. But look at those things that has actually made that person to be that person and do those things, and they can make you be that person. And I want to bring this into the association we're discussing, because I'm an advocate of gender equality. I would like to know the place of gender in the case of uh, role modeling. This person mentioned his mentor, a man. She mentioned her mentor, a woman. He mentioned his mentor, a man. Is it that a man must always pick a man as his mentor? <laughs> Pastor, you please answer that. I'll talk to you as well. <laughs> um, I'm not sure it's about gender, but let me look at it from two angles. Now I have a mentor, or I have mentors. I have Pastor Bimbo Dukoya, I have Kunle Shorinyo, I have Lanry Olushola, and then I have Anthony Robbins and some other people. Now, those are the first set, but if I need to get maybe closer to some of them, I would maybe gravitate towards the woman because there's a tendency she may understand me more. Now, some men really do understand you more than some women. So it depends on how I want to view it. If I think that, okay, this particular woman would understand me more, then I would gravitate towards her. Like Kunle Shorinyo, for example, he's been mentoring me for over 15 years, and trust me, there's nobody like him who understands me completely. He's seen me, um, he's seen my weaknesses, seen every part of me, but he's never given up on me for one second. Even the times I give up on myself, he still has faith, and I wonder where his faith is from. So it's just not about the gender, it's about the role that particular person is playing in your life and how close you want to be to that person. Yeah. So, I want to uh, quickly correct you. I never mentioned my mentor. I mentioned only my role model. Yes, but if you must know, my mentor is not even a man, a lady, my aunt, okay? I also have a role model in more about of, uh, you know, Ebony Life TV. So I think you can have role models who are you know, of any gender, but mentorship, I prefer you go with your gender. My name is Bright Evans. I just want to make a support to what this uh, woman just said now. She mentioned two things, self-realization and also to have a role model. According to what she said now, she was looking up to that uh, professor as a role model before until she met her one-on-one -on -one that later turned to a mentor for her. So I want to make a point to what uh, Mr. Martins said. You can never wake up a day and uh, be a mentor yourself or for people to look up to you. Here in Nigeria, it is impossible for you to just wake up and say something, even if what you have to say is reasonable. People won't listen to you at all. But you have to look up to someone. Because I quite agree to what uh, this guy that rapped the other time said. You must, that you must stand on somebody's shoulder. Yes, in it order is true. to launch out. 
according to one uh, what uh, Joyce Mayer in one of her book, she said plenty of Joyce Mayer fans in the audience. <laughs> That's good. He said you can never imagine a celebrity <laughs> if you ignore a celebrity, and it is true. <laughs> so what that place means is that you must have a kind of relationship, or you must look up to that person first. You can't just wake up a day and want people to go after you. You must also have someone you're looking up to. I'm coming. According to Miriam Webster's dictionary, a role model is a personality that whose behavioral pattern is followed according to a particular role. Um, from Mr. Martin's point of view, he observed a problem in his society and is trying to provide solutions to it. But indirectly, you have a model. You have someone you're patterning your life to. We, as a, we are as a result of influence. Indirectly, subconsciously, or consciously, we have been influenced by people around us. And we also influence others. What dressing Ms. Oyekonsola's point of view. But my point here <coughs> is this. Whether you like it or not, you have been modeled. Or you are modeling others. But the thing is, what kind of goal do you want to achieve? The problem most Nigerian youth make is they don't have a big picture of their life. They want to follow a particular person. But you could have models in different points, different the way, sectors um, of life. Prince has said. As Prince has said, I can decide I have a model, a role model in business. I have a role model in academics. I have a role model according to career. I have a role model according to family life. I'm not trying to be like these people entirely. I want to create, I want to create a particular me. I want to get a particular picture. I have a goal. I don't want to be like I don't want to be like Abraham Lincoln in influence, but I want to be myself. But I want to follow a particular suit. I want to follow a particular pattern of Abraham Lincoln. Use that pattern to influence myself and make myself. I don't want to be a duplicate of another person. You only become unique when you create a pattern for others to follow. And if you watch this model, what, what distinguishes a man in a society is not him being a copycat, but being a personality to be idolized. And once you are able to be idolized, they see you, and even after you've gone, who will say that, mm, I want to be like this person, but I don't, I want to pattern my life according to this person. An easier way to get that is, what do you want? Have a goal. I want to be this. I want to be this. Then look at people that have lived that lifestyle, that have something related to that. Pattern them, create a structure, bring them, synergize them together, and get a particular you. And you <laughs> I have a comment and I have a question. Uh, first of all, I want to agree with Chooks. I don't think your role model should be someone that you really want to copy. But your, role, your role model should, shouldn't be someone you really want to copy, but rather someone whose success inspires you and you just want to be as successful as that, as that, as that person, but you don't literally have to do the same thing that person wants to do. So currently, I have um, a facility management firm and I had a role model here in Lagos because my firm is over in Delta State. I have a role model here in Lagos and I really wanted to be close to the person. He was a family friend and because of that, I wanted him to mentor me. So I had to move down to Lagos, but the guy is very busy. He doesn't really have time, but I really want him to mentor me. So what I did is I forcefully moved into his apartment. You know, I just appeared one day and I was like, uh, since you've been running away, I'm coming to you. you know, and it worked. Because the guy just found out I was, you know, dogged, I wasn't going to give up. And he started carrying me along, said teaching me, he has a consulting, an engineering consulting firm. And I'm finding myself moving in that angle. And now he's mentoring me. But I have a question. Uh, I have two questions, actually. The first one wow. is, okay. is there a time when you're trying to meet someone to mentor you and you find out that the person doesn't have your time, you give up? And secondly, if someone is forcefully trying to mentor you, like the person is calling you, where are you? Come here. You know, and you don't want that. What do you do or what do you call that person? Okay, I don't believe in forceful mentorship. I think that is tantamount to witchcraft. I don't think that, I don't think that anybody should say, come here, I must mentor you or something. I think that it must be um, reciprocated. You know, if I like you and I think that I can teach you something or I can be your guide, I should also see that you are willing to learn and not just learn, learn from me. So it must be a two-way street. It just must not be one person forcing over the other person. That's not mentorship. That's witchcraft. Well, I'm an ambassador of uh, no, never giving up because my motto is never let your background put your back on the ground. 
for that, what I believe is <coughs> you have to give it every shot that you've got. You know, people will always tell you no, but it doesn't mean you will stop asking. It's worse not to ask. So keep going to them. You know, so for example, someone like Dan Foster is a very busy guy. I took a lot of you know, effort and everything to get to meet him. But you know, eventually it pays. You know, the effort at the end of the day you know, gives you a lot of rewards and returns. So just keep doing your best. Keep pushing. Keep asking. Keep sending emails. Keep pestering them. They, when they see that you are very serious, they will give you attention. All right. Yeah. But, but you really need to, sorry, you, need, yeah. you really need to like, um, have a sharp contrast between um, sending them steady emails and trying to get across to them and not bugging them. Because some people might see it as, okay, this guy is turning into uh, some. I also user. think it depends on the, con I get a lot of that. But you know, after a while, I say to myself, this person really, I, let me even hear what they have to say. Because the content of what you are asking is what is important. Exactly. If you phrase it well and you consider say, I know you're very busy, ma. Please, I would like to see you anytime you can. I just want you to mentor me. You give it a while. After a while, you are, they actually wear you down. Like, okay, I will be around from this day to this day. Can you make it? I, I, I think what, he, um, what um, Prince said makes sense because I get a lot of that. And believe me, it takes a lot to... The, your, your timing is crazy. And to even find time to do that, the person really has to be persistent. Not because you don't want to, because you have one million things to deal with. And they're not priorities. Sorry, but you're not priority. I also have my own issues. Okay, um, we have run out of time. I'd like to take last line, something that we want the viewers at home to go away remembering on this topic of role modeling. Martins, I'll start with you. I know we have convinced you. Well, uh, in trying to choose your role model, please don't forget who you are. Strive so hard to distinguish who you are. The moment they said something about self-realization, self yes. I think that is key before ever you want to pick up on anybody. But like I said earlier, I, I, I realize the problems within. I know my strengths and I know my, my, my weaknesses, and I have a picture. I still insist, it's hung somewhere there, and then I try as much as possible daily to get close to that thing I've painted. Mm. So I just encourage that, in as much as you want to pick a role model, Define no, who you are first. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, whether picking a role model or a mentor as an individual, um, I want us to have a purpose driven life. You know, let there, let there be a purpose for you living. Sorry, I'm, I always um, have um, a spiritual approach to whatever I do. No, that's the yeah. main. Be, get close to God and, you know, live a life that is worthy of emulation, become a mentor to someone else yourself. I mean, there's nothing bad as that. You have little ones that are looking up to you. You know, they say in law, um, um, you can never give what you don't have. You know, so always try and live a purpose-driven life. Um, in that, you can realize who you are, your very self, and create, carve a niche for yourself in the community, in the society you find yourself. You know, that is what I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Oing. Pastor Oing. Okay, um, I would like to say that please make your work your worship. Whatever you cannot serve to God, don't serve to any man. If you are going to be, if you are going to be a singer, don't just be a singer. Be the best singer. If you are going to be a writer, be the best writer. If you are going to be a street cleaner or a street sweeper. Sweep it in a way that no other person can do that better than you. Just make your work your worship. Thank you. Mm. Yes, Prince. I once heard uh, Ali Kudangote saying that many young people want to be like him today. He's multi billionaire in dollars, but they never want to start where he started from. Mm. And uh, I think for me, I would want to advise young people. You see, anyone with a role model today started from somewhere. And they wanted to be somebody in life. They had the goal, they had the vision. So with yourself, write a one-year goal plan, write a five-year goal plan, a 10-year goal plan. Look at those who are doing what you want to do and start you know, work, working you know, in line with their principles and with their, their line of action. And then with time, you will see yourself getting there gradually. It's a gradual process. It never comes overnight. And then as you keep doing that, you will see yourself replicating the successes you know, that they also have. Thank you. I think that's a good place to end it. And um, 
I'd like to thank you, my panelists. Thank you for this very enlightening conversation. Um, to my audience, a very big thank you for your contribution. For the viewers at home, if you have comments or suggestions, send an email to us at insideoutwithagatha@yahoo.com or www.facebook.com forward slash Inside Out with Agatha or follow us on Twitter at Inside Out Media. A very big thank you to Voltic Water, to Oba for my hair, Olufunke Lori for my makeup, and Child Designs for my outfit, to Kelu Image Consultants for styling me. Until next week when we come your way again talking about something else equally as interesting. Bye bye and see you next week. <laughs>